welcome to the Devin Think for Historians YouTube channel. My name is Abigail Oran and I, along with my co-creator Ada Barlett, have designed a set of courses that teach historians and other researchers who work with qualitative data how to use this powerful uh, database software um, so that they can better store, organize, and write from their documents. So if you're interested in looking at Devon Think for Historians, uh, either this, the starting up or super user guides, um, the link is in the description box below. But today I want to kind of um, continue our journey through this series about the DOTS uh, Devon Think database, as we're calling it. Um, so, uh, there are, there's a playlist of videos if you want to catch up, if you haven't seen, uh, the context, but to sort of briefly summarize it, um, I started a new project, uh, about a family member who was a painter in, um, early to mid 20th century New York City, um, named Abraham Mark Dots. And in January, I went to the Archive of American Art to look at um, one of two collections in the United States with his papers. And I also looked at the papers of uh, another relative um, who was a sculptor named Aaron Goodelman. So uh, feel free to catch up on those videos if you want to know more. Um, in today's video, what I am going to do is walk you through a screen recording of how I processed and organized the very first uh, document and folder that I added to the Dots Devon Think database from this research trip. So um, basically, uh, in just a few short moments, we'll move over to the computer and I will voice over um, and tell you exactly what I'm doing and why um, and how you uh, can do it too, and what you can learn um, from watching my process. So let's get to it. We're starting off in the folder or group rather for the A Mark Dots papers at the Archives of American Art. I'm opening box one and I'm creating a new group for folder one. I've just airdropped the first seven PDF files, which are what the are the total contents of folder one. I'm now dragging and dropping the seven PDFs into the subgroup named folder one. And you can see when I maximize it, they are showing up. The first one I'm going to rename dots CV. And I'm going to note that there are actually two versions of the CV in this file when I name it. So two copies, and then I'm putting that it is circa 1961. I'm also going to tag it biography, which is a tag I am using on documents that are going to help me um, outline the basic chronological contours of Dots' life. I'm just quickly scrolling through to show you what this document looks like. Now, even though the, this document is showing that it is PDF plus text, meaning that it was OCR'd, it isn't actually um, text searchable uh, in DevonThink, um, and I need to re-OCR it. So what you're seeing here is now I can highlight and I can also search. So I'm just putting in 1889 and I can see that DevonThink is able to find that text in the file. So I'm just deleting the original version. Now this one is fully text searchable. And I'm gonna go on and create a super annotation. A super annotation is a custom uh, annotation file that we created and that can be purchased as part of the Devon Think for Historians super user course. And basically, as you can see, it collects all of the data, the citation data that you need in order to create a Chicago style citation for an archival document. So I have the author and title, the collection. 
This archive does not include a collection number. That's why I'm skipping it. This document is from box one, folder one. I know the date is circa 1961. And then I'm just filling in the basic uh, name and location of the archive. I'm also just typing in a reminder to my future self in the comments and annotations section so that when I come back to this document, I know to look um, for these specific dates about an event um, in Dots' life. Now, once I'm done typing, I'm going to make sure to hit the save button at the top and then I'm gonna close the super annotation and I'm just going to make sure that I've highlighted the super annotation file rather than the original file so that I can then go and run my script to export the super annotation to bookends, which is a reference manager. And in the Dev and Think for Historian Super User Guide, you also get this script so that your citation information is sent over to bookends. And basically what this allows you to do is to, um, use um, the plugin between bookends and a word processor like Microsoft Word to cite your archival documents the same way you would cite journal articles and other secondary sources. Basically what I've just quickly done is I've um, checked to make sure the information is correct and now I'm copying the ID number for this reference and I'm going to add it to the file name for this document. Having this at hand when I go to write will accelerate the citation process in Microsoft Word and we show that whole process in the Devon Think for Historians Super User Guide. Finally, I'm going to drag the super annotation file into the annotations folder because I will be able to view all of that content in the inspector pane when I toggle over to the annotations. This is again, something that we show in the um, super user guide. Okay, and this is what it looks like when I've repeated the process for every single one of these documents in this folder. I have named them all. I have made sure that they're all text searchable. I have tagged them and I have created super annotations that contain all of the relevant citation information and any uh, comments or annotations I want to attach. I've also created, um, I've also exported them all to bookends and made sure that all of that information transferred over. And then I made sure to add the ID number to the file name of each file. So what is the point of going through all of this rigmarole? First of all, you always want to have the citation information connected to your documents because should something happen and a file gets accidentally dragged, removed or misplaced or disappears uh, from where you think it should be, you will be able to consult that attached citation information to know where to put it back. Or if you are pulling documents from many, many different places into something like a, a smart group, um, you will not have to backtrack to where that, um, that source came from in your database. Uh, you will just know from the annotation, aha, this is what archive this was from. Wonderful, wonderful. Next, I believe that this process is a great opportunity and like a structured opportunity to do a first review of the documents you collected. It just forces you to kind of slow down and think about what that item, what the value of that item is and how you may want to use it in the future. So um, you can add the appropriate tags and information um, so that when you go to search for it later or stumble upon it later, you already have primed the pump, if you will. You sort of already know um, what to look for in it. Uh, finally, by linking it to bookends, you begin this critical step 
of setting yourself up for success when you write. Citation is tedious, but if in the moment you are writing from a document, you are able to go squiggly line, hashtag, ID number, close squiggle, period, at the end of a sentence uh, about uh, making a claim based on this particular document, you will have done future you a great service because at the end of writing, you can just run that whole document through a scan, bookends will pop in all of the citations, and voila, your bibliography will be done, your footnotes will be done. And um, not only will they be done, the uh, software will have um, done um, repeat citations, like if you cite one document multiple times, it will automatically format them so that the subsequent citations are in the short format. It saves you so much time. So it's a little bit of energy up front, but at the end of the day, you will be so happy and relieved um, that you just spent a little bit of time to get organized and process your documents. That's it, it's pretty simple. Um, obviously, as with everything, there are exceptions and you know tricky citations, but for the vast majority of archival documents, this super annotation format will be sufficient. Um, most uh, word, um, sorry, not word processors, most reference managers like Zotero um, and others don't have a custom uh, archival document format, you have to create it. But with our uh, Dumb Thing for Historian super user guide, we walk you through exactly how to set up that custom um, citation um, record. And uh, yeah, just it's a really valuable hack, I think. Um, so I hope this kind of gives you a little bit of insight into, you know, what Dev and Think um, and this Dev and Think bookends integration can do for you and um, that you get one more peek into the Dots Dev and Think database project. Okay, that's it from me. Leave any uh, questions in the comments that you may have. Um, as always, the whole YouTube spiel, please subscribe, like, notification bell, whatever. Um, we're very glad to have you along for the ride. All right, have a great rest of your day. Take care.